Hello everyone, welcome to your weekly tech update, the show that explores the newest, coolest, and craziest side of tech available on the interwebs. I am your tech leader, Ray McNeil, Coming up on the program today, so many stories from this year's Comic-Con. We're going to start with Lucasfilm. They have hired a YouTuber who used deep fake to improve the look of the Mandalorian. The Star Trek universe is expanding massively with three new series on the horizon. Happening in this week's What The? Fry Force. What happens when Taco Bell and Comic-Con collide. And of course, we'll wrap up the program with this week's Moment of Joy. All that and a whole lot more coming up on today's edition of your weekly tech update next. Luke Skywalker's CGI face in the character's Mandalorian cameo was met with a lot of criticism, and fans even tried to fix the scene with various tools and programs. One of those fans did so well, Lucasfilm has hired him to help it ensure its upcoming projects won't feature underwhelming de-aging and facial visual effects. That fan is a YouTuber known as Shamook, who uses deepfake technology to improve upon bad CG effects and to put actors in shows and movies that they never starred in. In the comments section of a video that replaces Christian Bale with Robert Pattinson as the Batman in Christopher Nolan's film, Shamook wrote that he joined Lucasfilm Industrial Light and Magic a few months ago. When asked what his role within the company is, he said his official title is Senior Facial Capture Artist. The studio has confirmed the hire with IndieWire, telling the publication that it's always on the lookout for talented artists. A representative said in a statement, over the past several years, ILM has been investing in both machine learning and AI as a means to produce compelling visual effects work, and it's been terrific to see momentum building in this space as the technology advances. In addition to working on a deepfake version of Luke in The Mandalorian, he also deepfaked Tarkin's and Leia's appearances in Rogue One. Shamook's videos don't always show the most realistic results, but the great ones like Luke's truly look impressive. Lucasfilms could use his technical know-how to make sure de-aged characters and CG faces won't take us straight to uncanny valley territory anymore. Speaking of The Mandalorian, the emergence of visual productions like those popularized by the TV show have given display giants a new niche for their massive screens. Sony, which boasts a movie production arm, is already using its modular crystal LEDs to provide backgrounds for shoots. Now, Samsung is getting in on the act through a new partnership with major Korean movie and TV show producer CJENM. The pack will see Samsung provide its massive micro-LED TVs, known as The Wall, to the studio's virtual production facility when it opens later this year. CJ ENM previously struck a deal with Fortnite maker Epic Games to use its Unreal Engine, which also provided the digital backdrops for The Mandalorian and, of course, other future projects. Visual productions are gaining traction in global filmmaking. The tech technique involves the use of LED stages, game engines, and VR to create and control computer-generated backdrops. Currently, the massive investment has limited the tools to blockbuster shoots, but industry insiders believe that could change as people realize the savings they bring on crew travel and physical sets and infrastructure. As a result, virtual production is expected to become the norm in filmmaking within five years, almost completely eliminating the green screen. That's according to an industry report. Samsung says its latest screens will deliver improved visuals thanks to their support for HDR10+, and optimized frame rates. The company will install an oval-shaped main display at CJENM's new complex with a diameter of 20 meters 
and a height of 7 meters or more. Samsung says its massive screen measures over 1,000 inches and supports up to 16K high-resolution content. But the Korean company hasn't embraced virtual production quite like Sony has. The Japanese conglomerate previously paid $250 million to acquire a minority stake in Epic Games. It also bought a virtual production software maker in 2019 and integrated it into Sony Innovation Studios, the state-of-the-art facility located on the Sony Pictures studio lot. The Ghostbusters are back! Well, not really, but there is a new trailer for Ghostbusters Afterlife, and it leans into just about everything you remember from the original movie. You're a great mom. I don't know. I'm fine with Trevor. But with Phoebe, she really keeps me on the outside. That's normal. She's an awkward, nerdy kid. Maybe a new home can be an opportunity to start fresh. I just wish she'd get into some trouble. There's still time. What are you doing here in Somerville, anyway? We're completely broke. And our grandfather left us this creepy old farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. Your father wasn't much of a homemaker. He could hardly keep the power on. You're saying he left us nothing? Well, I wouldn't say nothing. You went with the station wagon? It's the only one that had an engine. What is happening here? Somehow, a town with no fault lines is shaking on a daily basis. Maybe it's the apocalypse. Egon came out here for a reason. Are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? you or any of your family ever seen a spook, specter, or ghost? Oh my god. You guys hear that? Something's coming. The whole city took the walking dead. Ghostbusters Afterlife will be released in theaters on November 11th.